Hello everyone, it's Thursday and you're watching Within the Frame. I'm Kim bo -kyung. How much plastic did you use today? Plastic is easy to use and easy to throw out. But have you thought about the negative consequences of plastic usage on our environment and even our health? According to the OECD, global plastic production doubled from 2000 to 2019 to reach around 460 million tons. Only two-thirds is just thrown out right away. Only 9% of plastic waste is recycled, another 19% is incinerated, around half ends up in landfills, and 22 ends up at uncontrolled dump sites. What risks does plastic pose? And why does so little end up being recycled, and is recycling even the right answer? To commemorate 2023 World Environmental Day, we invite very special guests to talk about plastic and the risk it poses. Sarah Farrard, Stakeholder Engagement Lead at Environmental Action. Sarah, welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And we also have Maria Westerbos, founder and director at Plastic Soup Foundation. She is also a co-founder of the Plastic Health Council. Maria, good to see you. Now, Maria, first question to you. Uh, since 1970s, the rate of plastic production has grown faster than that of any other material. Uh, according to United Nations Environmental Program, we produce about 400 million tons of plastic waste every year. Uh, what is driving such increase and how serious is this situation? Well, every year, big industries um, produce more plastic and in 2022 it was more than 400 million tons as you just said in 2030 this could be doubled since plastic does not go away anymore it's only getting smaller and smaller until you cannot see it anymore with the naked eye we are as a matter uh, of speaking polluting our planet in a very very destructive way Right, in a very destructive way, very concerning indeed. Uh, Sarah, let's tap into the severity of the plastic issue and the harm it can cause. Uh, it is estimated that more than 13,000 different chemicals are involved in the production of plastics. Are the toxic chemicals and their effects readily considered when producing plastics? So plastic is a very complex material. Um, it is made of much more than just a few materials that are derived from petrol. Um, in fact, every plastic product can contain tens of different chemicals that represent in some cases more than 60% of the weight of the material. Um, so chemicals of concerns have actually been found in plastics across a wide range of sectors and product uh, value chains. And out of those 13,000 substances that are used today, almost half of them have never been tested. Now, recently, a UN report showed that um, about 7,000 tested substances uh, that are used in plastic, almost half of them had one or more uh, hazardous properties of concern. And in our uh, Plastic Overshoot Day report, we anticipate that plastic waste mismanagement this year will result in the release uh, of roughly 420,000 tons of chemical additives in the waterways. So that has ecological consequences. The good news is during INC2, so the second negotiation round that took place in Paris last week, many NGOs, but also some delegations, have been highlighted, uh, highlighting this human health uh, risk um, and also the one of the additives. Um, there's also the high ambition coalition of countries that has called for restrictions uh, of some of those hazardous chemicals. So the issue is well highlighted, but it still definitely needs to be addressed. Right, I see. So from the very start of the plastic production, it is very much linked to this toxic chemicals that many times uh, get not to be tested. Now, uh, Maria, what's worrying more is that, uh, uh, that more issues occur when they are being dealt with after we use them. Uh, around 12% of the plastic produced gets incinerated, as far as I know. Uh, could you tell us more about how incinerated plastic exacerbates global warming? Uh, well, science is becoming increasingly um, uh, aware of the role that plastic production, incineration and recycling, as well as plastic pollution itself, 
play in climate change. After all, plastic is made from fossil fuels. So if we want to limit global warming, warming to no more than a degree and a half by 2050, we should not emit more than 570 billion tons of CO2. Of this, some 50 to 20 percent alone will come from plastic production and plastic waste incineration. Mm. So you could say that plastic and global warming are very uh, closely connected. Mm. I see, very alarming. But what we talked about is just 12% of the plastic produced, right? The vast majority of plastic ever produced is just piling up in landfills and polluting the environment. Now, Sarah, could you tell us how this uh, harms marine life and food chains? Yeah, indeed. Globally, actually, in 2023, 43% of the plastic waste will be mismanaged um, at the end of its life. So it has a risk of ending up into our oceans. It's an additional 68 million tons of plastic that it will make its way uh, into the environment and by extension, potentially be consumed by wildlife and by human. If we look at that differently, it's as if after July 28, all of the plastic that is produced will end up directly in nature. Um, now you have mentioned landfills. We have to make a distinction between sanitary landfills and unsanitary ones. Sanitary landfills, just like proper incineration, they may not be circular and ideal, but they are still considered within the portion that is actually well managed and would not leak in the environment. But when we talk about mismanaged waste, um, it means that this plastic is either not collected at all, uh, in which case it will directly end up in nature, or that is collected, but then it is mismanaged. For example, it's burned in open burn sites uh, when it re and it releases toxic fumes from that, or it's discarded in dump sites and in unsanitary landfills. And from there, a part of this plastic will leak into waterways and into oceans, and mismanaged plastic will at some point degrade into microplastics uh, and it will make uh, its way up in our food chain. So actually microplastics have been found in tap water, in beers, in salt, etc. They're present in basically all samples collected in the world's ocean, including uh, into the Arctic. Right, I see. Sarah, thank you for pointing out the difference between the sanitary landfill and unsanitary landfill. Now, Maria, uh, since our Sarah pointed out the problem of the microplastic, I'd like to tap on that issue as well. It eventually finds its way to negatively impact human health. And uh, apparently the microplastics can be found everywhere from cosmetics that are used and clothes that I wear. Uh, how risky is this to human health? Well, um, I can tell you that is quite uh, risky. Uh, even uh, science says we don't need any proof anymore. Uh, the proof is already there. You must imagine that it's a little bit tricky what I'm going to say now, but you must imagine that plastic is, uh, is oil. So if uh, plastic is oil, then we have uh, and, and plastic is in our blood and it's in our heart and it's in our intestines, it's in the fetus, it's in the placenta. Then we have oil in our blood, oil in our heart, oil in our intestines, oil everywhere, which means that we are, um, it, it seems that we are getting serious sick from plastics and microplastics in our body. And that's why Plastic Soup Foundation and the Plastic Planet um, and Plastic Planet is based in the UK. We formed together the Plastic Health Council. We, we think together that the production of plastic must be radically reduced to protect future generations from a real health disaster. And human health should be in the heart of the legally binding UN Plastic Treaty. And we will fight for that um, with everything we have. Hmm. Good to hear. I mean, oil in my blood, I can definitely feel the need to uh, tackle this issue as soon as possible. Uh, and thus, uh, I'd like to talk about the, how uh, recycling plastic is uh, considered as one way to deal with this issue. Sarah, but apart from whether this uh, recycling plastic issue is okay or not, I'd like to just focus on the rate of being recycled right now. Uh, and as far as I know, only around 9% of plastic ever produced is said to be recycled. Why is this figure so low? Yeah, for plastic recycling to happen, 
first, this plastic has to be collected. Um, and we have two points that many countries do not even have the capabilities, so meaning the infrastructure or the funding, to collect plastic. In many countries, the informal sector actually plays a critical role in collecting plastic, and not all plastic have a value for recycling. So if we think of small pieces of packaging, of light films, of multi-material pouches, etc., they have a, resi a very low residual value, um, and it's very difficult to recycle them. So they're typically not collected. Um, now we must also highlight that recycling is also just one solution. Uh, but we have to be conscious that even with proper collection of plastic at scale, even with uh, funding for waste management that can come, for example, for extended producer responsibility systems, where the companies uh, who put plastic on the market actually pays fees to participate in the waste management. Despite all of this, humanity will still not be able to recycle its way out of this plastic pollution crisis. Um, there are also issues with recycling, especially for food contacts. So, we have to look at other solutions, such as circular economy models, like repair, reuse, refill initiatives. Those have to be encouraged uh, by also proper policies. Uh, and then they have to be scaled if we really want to have a shot at uh, reducing this global issue. Right. So recycling is not the best solution. I know uh, I can feel that. Uh, Maria, Greenpeace also added that recent findings suggested uh, that the process of recycling can actually be more toxic for human health. Could you elaborate more on this? Well, as Sarah said, there are a lot of toxic uh, additives in plastic. And if you start recycling uh, plastic, then you also start recycling the chemicals in there. So what they found, research, uh, researchers sh showed, uh, research showed, sorry, that chemical contamination from recycled plastic nurdles, and that's the basic of plastic products, is already widespread. Spread. And the conclusion is very clear. Discarded, discarded plastic is therefore unsuitable as a raw material in a circular economy. And again, a youth threat for human health. You cannot, you cannot just, like in Hungary, for example, they found toys from recycled plastic that were extremely toxic because they recycled the chemicals in there also. Right, I see. Now, considering all the things, I believe it seems uh, reducing plastic production itself would be the main key to tackling this issue. And as far as I understand, a number of countries, including the UK, Kenya, India, as well as the EU, have already started individually regulating single-use plastic items. How are they doing, Sarah? So indeed, because the root cause of uh, plastic pollution is this imbalance between the plastic that humanity produces and uses and its ability to manage it when it becomes waste, we do need to reduce the volumes of plastic consumed, but we also need to increase the waste management capabilities. Yeah. And if we look at the single-use plastics, um, so that's basically the plastic packaging and the disposable plastics like uh, bags, straws, uh, cutlery, etc., that are only used once and then thrown away, they represent really the largest plastic application category. So they represent almost uh, a third of all of the plastic consumed globally. And overall, despite the bans on some of the single-use plastics by some countries, there is today more single-use plastic waste than ever before. So there's actually been an additional 6 million metric tons uh, that was generated in 2021 compared to 2019. Uh, and it's still entirely made of fossil fuel uh, based virgin feedstock, basically. Now, efforts to reduce single use plastics are beneficial. Um, they need to continue, um, but they're not nearly enough. Uh, and we also must tackle this uh, single use approach um, because shifting to another single use material keeps us in the same um, linear model of you know, take, use, discard. Um, so do we do want to reduce the 68 million tons of plastic that is mismanaged every year, uh, but we don't want to create another waste issue. So circularity and reuse models really have to be integrated.
Hmm, I see. Now, uh, implementing regulations individually is, of course, very important. But I believe uh, if we, if the whole world could jointly do this, uh, we could better tackle this issue, right? So, thus, world leaders from 175 countries have agreed to draw up a legally binding UN treaty that will regulate plastic production and pollution internationally. Now, what significance does this environmental multilateral deal have, and how are discussions advancing, Maria? Yeah, well, I, I always uh, I, I, I like to compare it with the uh, hole in the uh, ozone layer. Uh, we were able to uh, stop that hole and uh, make it uh, um, um, and close the gap because we all worked together in the Montreal Protocol in 80s, 1987. Mm. And now we are trying to do the same with plastic. And it's very important because, again, if plastic is oil and plastic is oil, then it's raining plastic. Plastic is even found in raindrops. It's um, the ice caps are melting. Um, amongst other reasons, also because of microplastics. They have an effect on the ice caps. Um, um, and uh, it's it's raining oil. It's um, it's in the air. It's in our water. It's everywhere. So we must work together. All we must all work together to stop this as soon as we can. Um, and um, I'm very happy that the world decided to try uh, to try to stop plastic pollution and even more. Uh, already over 80 countries have decided that human health should be part of the treaty and not only end of pipe, so not only um, the plastic pollution on itself, but um, in the heart of the treaty, we must talk about human health. Right. I cannot agree more that we need to work together to tackle this issue. Uh, Sarah, the draft is ex expected to be based on a comprehensive approach that addresses the full cycle of plastic. What kind of things do you believe should be included in the draft? Yes, this treaty is really a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, at creating a framework to solve the plastic pollution crisis. It can be a force for good if its scope is ambitious enough. Um, and this full life cycle approach is really key. Um, so for this, the treaty must be science-based. Uh, it must integrate the data, for example, on waste management capabilities, such as the data provided in the plastic overshoot day reports. Um, the health aspect must also really well be uh, integrated. Uh, for example, the chemicals present in plastic should be fully tested for safety prior to introduction into the market and to our environment. Um, the social aspect of plastic pollution also must be integrated. Uh, we must address social injustices um, with waste management, particularly uh, in the global south. Uh, we know that waste pickers play a critical role uh, in the waste management globally, and the treaty, the treaty must protect uh, the informal sector, uh, respect their livelihood, their health, their human rights. Um, we also need to have dedicated financial mechanisms uh, and the capaci capacity building uh, to ensure that all countries can, in, in effect, participate into this treaty. And finally, um, transparency is really key to hold governments and businesses accountable. So we need some mandatory disclosure and reporting uh, to take place. Uh, this would actually enable corporations um, to, to basically have the tools to lead the change towards sustainable production practices. And then that would also enable to create this waste management uh, system that would be fit for the 21st century. Right, I see. I mean, I hope the draft could include all the aspects Sarah talked about. Uh, before I let our experts go, what individual efforts could we also make, Maria? I would say reduce, mm -hmm. so use as much, as less plastic as you can. Refuse, don't use plastic if you don't need it. Reuse it, so don't throw it away after one uh, time. And mm -hmm. refill, and next to that, of course, support the Plastic Health Council. Thank you. All right, reduce, refuse, reuse, and refill. All right, we hope the small That's efforts it. we make, yes, exactly. We hope the small efforts we make as individuals could trigger a big stream of changes. Now, unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's edition, but thank you, Sarah and Maria, for your insights. We really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Our pleasure, thank you. All right, that's all for Within the Frame tonight. We'll be back tomorrow with more in-depth stories. Thank you for watching and goodbye.